What's going on everybody? My name is Monatui, coach of the Tampa Bay Lux Raves, and today I'm very excited to bring you guys our PPL Division 1 Season 4 draft analysis. If you guys don't know what the PPL is, the Pokemon Premier League, this is the very first league that I was ever introduced to before the TBU, before the GBA. I participated in Division 2 Season 1, lost. Uh, I think we got six there, and then we moved on to last season of the PPL, which we won undefeated, which is really cool, and now we are in this season. I understand I have a much larger uh, viewer base, largely in part due to the GBA, so if you're unfamiliar with the PPL, I'm just going to give you that information there. Uh, PPL is a lot of fun. There are some really cool coaches in Division 1. All of their links will be in the description below. We got people like Shoddy, people like George, uh, people like Fufu, aka okay. Sam, Slyro, Polymac, uh, some other people that I can't think of on the top of my head, but regardless, let us now get into the draft that I decided to pick for this season. Now, I'll be going over any snipes, any things I considered, things like that, but regardless, let's just get started. I'm going to do this on Showdown. I'm not going to put in any like super fancy graphics into this just because I feel like it's a little bit easier to do it on Showdown. Both easier for me editing-wise and prep-wise, and both easier to just show off what each mod is capable of, what each of each of the mod stats and whatnot. So, without further ado, let's start it off. Uh, it's going to be separated into two parts: part one, part two. Not separate videos that, that'll all be in this video, but uh, just separate teams because obviously you can't have eleven or whatever mods on your team. But regardless, before I get into uh, what I drafted, I also just want to go over the uh, draft system that we use. Our draft system is very different from the GBA. The GBA does tier drafts, as well as I believe they have a point value as well but we do entirely a point-based system. Each mon has their each individual price, and you have a total of 110 million European monies to spend. So, uh, I had 110 to start with. There are certain mons up there, like Manaphy and Megalodios, that are worth like 19 million, Kieran Black worth 20, which is a lot of money, and then it goes all the way down to 1 million, and whatever is not listed on the pricing sheet is listed at 1 million. So, uh, without further ado, uh, let's get into each of the mods. I'll also be updating you guys on how much money I had left in between each pick, or at least I'll ha let you know like about how much money I have. So let's start off. I uh, had a couple different plans to go with, I, and by a couple different, I mean I built like 28 plans with Kyle on um, which um, certain teams to build or certain uh, certain drafts. So uh, there were a couple of them. I originally had this cool plan around Clefable, but Shadi ended up taking Clefable, no problem. Uh, had some plans around Manaphy, had some plans around Victini, pretty much all of the top mons. I had plans around Thunderous Incarnate, Thunder, Thunder T up there, I think Azumarill was on a couple. Uh, so I had a couple options for around one pick, and I was very happy to get this one, because this is one of the plans that I... When I built, I thought, I said, you know what, this is going to be really cool, and I kind of hope I get this one. And lo and behold, this Pokemon fell to me, and I was able to build around this mon. This is a mon that a lot of people have very mixed feelings about. A lot of people do not see this as a round one pick because uh, it's, it hasn't really done great for a lot of people, but I see it as a very good Pokemon. I see it as something that allows me to unleash my mind, unleash my creativity onto my opponent. I can pretty much get anything to do with this mod. You've probably figured it out by now. I'm just going to put it in, and that is Mew. Now, uh, I'm not going to say anything cliche like Mew is the definition of versatility or whatever. Mew has the potential to be incredibly good. I think it has the potential to be the best mod in any format. Now, that does not mean that it always is the best mod in the format. It does not mean that it's going to be the best mod, period. Because while Mew can do pretty much everything, it doesn't want to be locked into one role. It does not want to be locked into a bulky defog variant. It doesn't want to be locked into just a defensive variant in general. It doesn't want to be locked into a support mod. It doesn't always want to be locked into a setup sleeper role. Mew shines best when it doesn't have to do anything in a draft. It shines best when all of its other roles are lifted and you can do whatever you want with Mew each game. So uh, keep that in mind as we go through the draft and uh, give me an opinion on whether or not I was able to succeed in doing that with the rest of my team. But just to get into Mew a little bit, there are a like I said, there are a ton of things that you can do. Pretty much everything, like I said. It gets set up on both sides, being Swords Dance and Nasty Plot. It gets things like Calm Mind. It gets things like Bulk Up, even. I can run Baton Pass on this thing, so I can Baton Pass uh, stat boost to certain things. It gets access to Stab on both sides, being Zen Headbutt. 
and Psychic, it learns pretty much every TM or Tutu move from the past generations, so it's obviously very good there. It gets ridiculous coverage, as I kind of just mentioned, and it's probably obvious. Like, obviously, like, it gets Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, Thunder, if you want, uh, Flamethrower, Fire Blast, etc. I probably don't have to go into this thing's move pool. You guys have probably figured that already. It gets a ton of different moves every TM from every and every TM and every move tutor move from past generations. So like I said, not a lot to go into there. Gets things like Sucker Punch for priority, which is really nice, so I can run like a sword stance sucker punch combination. Uh, with Auras coming out, it also gets things like Gunk Shot, which is really nice, knock off of course as well. So it is just a very, very, very versatile Pokemon can do pretty much anything I want it to do, but like I said, it can only do whatever it wants to do, or whatever I want to do, if I build the proper team around it that allows it to do whatever it wants to do, and it's not locked into any specific role. So, with that being said, let us now move on to my next pick that I think supports this Mon very nicely. One of the problems with Mew, uh, that doesn't, it like, this is a problem with Mew regardless, no matter what the team you have, is with base 100 offenses, it's not going to hit immediately super hard. Uh, and of course, only being mono psychic type, it's not going to have any secondary stabs. It's basically going to have a bunch of extra powerful hidden powers, I guess is a good way to say it. For coverage moves, it's not going to hit very hard immediately. So, what I wanted was a mon that I could immediately switch from Mew into. That would give me immediate power. This punishes my opponent for trying to knock off my Mew. This mon punishes my opponent for going any, for any sort of dark move because of its ability. Uh, this mon gives me immediate offense, immediate wall breaking capabilities to the point where if I have a setup Mew and I decide to switch out, I switch out into one threatening Mon into another threatening Mon. This Mon synergizes very nicely with Mew typing wise. It has rocks, has access to taunt, has some other support options that I don't have to use on Mew all the time. This is a Mon that I am looking forward to use very very much and that Mon is Terrakion. Now, uh, I probably, in this draft, I wanted to get Zapdos as well, just because Mew and Zapdos work really t well together. Zapdos is a very good defogger, so I don't have to rely that on Mew, things like that. But I decided I wanted to get Terrakion, just because knowing Shoddy, I feel like he might have wanted to take it, because that goes really well with Clefable, and he is a huge fan of Terrakion as well. Terrakion is also rising in popularity, so I didn't want this thing to... I didn't want to let this thing go round two, and uh, have it not come back to me, because this is a mod that I found very important and more irreplaceable than Zapdos, so we picked up Terrakion, and Terrakion is an absolute powerhouse. If you look at this thing's stats, it's got a very nice speed tier at 108, so it speed ties with things like Cobalion, Keldeo, uh, Infernape, things like that. Uh, obviously, you run it up to Jolly, I believe it hits like 346, yeah. So, we have that. Its attack stat is incredibly powerful in 129, uh, goes up to 357 at level 100, and with dual stabs, of close combat and stone edge. There are very few things that want to switch into either of these things. It takes care of steel types, takes, takes care of flying types that would want to switch in on some normal fighting types. It gets access to things like earthquake of course. I'll just go scroll down. You got iron head and poison jab for fairies. You have quick attack for not the strongest of priority but at least for some sort of priority. Uh, this thing also gets access to Dual Dance, so I can run like a Swords Dance Rock Polish set, which is really nice, because then I'll be boosting my extremely powerful attack already, and I'll be able to boost its speed as well. Terrakion is an excellent Scarfer, like I said, with a nice speed tier and being able to hit very hard, can possibly clean up late game. Um, and like I said, synergizes beautifully with Mew, because if anybody ever tries to go for a super effective dark move onto my Mew, then it'll just be giving my Terrakion attack boost, and that's gonna click in my opponent's head and they might have to think twice about clicking that knockoff or clicking that dark bolt or something like that. Also, I can switch into U-turns relatively well depending on the Mon, of course. Obviously I'm not going to like switch into a Scizor, but regardless there's that. Uh, like I said, it gets Earthquake to cover some fire types or some ground types that I don't want to hit with Stone Edge or Close Combat. Uh, this thing does get access to Stealth Rock as well, so sometimes I won't have to rely on Mew as my Stealth Rocker. Uh, it also is a very nice substitute attacker. It has very solid bulk in 91, 90, 90. Same bulk as Keldeo. So it can really take hits relatively well, even like stab bullet punches and aqua jets. It can take one of them and then fire back a very powerful hit. Its special attack is also good enough to the point where I could run something like a Naive Nature and then Hidden Power Ice to hit things like Lander Asterion or something along those lines. So this is just a very powerful mon in general. It's a very 
solid mon, it synergizes with Mew. I'm just going to take a quick look, see if there's anything else I could possibly use. Zen Headbutt is decent for some poison types, things maybe like Weezing or something like that that I can't hit with Earthquake. It's also a fast taunter, which is really nice. I can taunt things. I can maybe be a suicide lead with rocks and taunt, stop my opponent from getting up rocks, and go for my own rocks. Uh, if I remember correctly, this does get Endeavor. No, it does not. I am stupid. Ignore that. But regardless, this Terrakion is an absolute powerhouse. It does some things very nicely. It does the one thing I needed to, to do the most, which is just hit hard right off the bat. And yeah, uh, not much else I can say about it. Synergizes nicely with Mew, hits incredibly hard, is a stealth rocker, fast taunter, setup sweeper, etc. So, Terrakion we have on our team, and I'm very glad to have it. Um, now to move on to our next pick. Uh, I was still looking into getting Zapdos, because it actually, by the time I had taken Terrakion, it had not gone, and when it was coming back to me, it went to Paul, who is right ahead of me, and he actually decided to take Zapdos, which was a little bit unfortunate, but then uh, I actually found this up. I was just waking up, and Kyle was like, hey dude, Zapdos got taken. Why don't you take this thing? And I was like, I don't know why this is still here, but yeah, uh, so I took Thunderous Incarnate to go along with Mew and Terrakia. Now, I wanted Zapdos, like I said, because of the hazard removal, essentially. I don't necessarily need the fighting switch in, because Mew does that very well, but... Zapdos would have been nice for some slower Volt Switch, also has the option to be offensive, also uh, is very bulky, but Thunderous Incarnate still supports this team beautifully. Being a Prankster Taunter has Prankster Thunder Wave, which can help you save games. Uh, obviously, Prankster Thunder Wave is one of the best things, like, ever, because you click Thunder Wave. Like, Thunder Wave is one of the best moves in the game regardless. Getting to get a guaranteed Thunder Wave off is absolutely incredible. And not even, even if I'm not running Thunder Wave, which I probably won't be a lot of the time because I'm going to want coverage moves, my opponent's always going to be afraid of a possible Thunder Wave coming their way because, you know, you, I send this in versus like a faster thing like Greninja or like a Scarfer or something like that. I can just click Thunder Wave and cripple them. And not only am I crippling them, sometimes I don't even have to stack this mod to their attack because Paralysis has that chance to paralyze. So uh, this is just a beautiful ability. Also has Defiant in case I want to punish defoggers, which is really nice. I can send this in on a defog or on an intimidate user, go for things like a wild charge. I can go for things, I thought this got acrobatics, it's disappointing, I know Thunder is, um, I know Tornadus does, but regardless, it also has a beautiful physical move pool and things like knockoff, it gets access to U-turn, it gets access to, for, with, ah, gets access to Iron Tail to hit fairies, we can just scroll through, it gets things like bulk up we can possibly bring, I know, uh, Trav actually brought like a Rest Sleep Tog Bulk Up Thunderous in previous seasons. It ac gets access to Crunch, it gets access to a lot of different things, Hammer Arm even, Super Power as well. If I want to hit things like Blissey or Chansey, which I think went undrafted, but regardless, if I want to hit things on the physical side very hard, I can. And that's not even getting into its special move pool, because of course it does have a higher special attack than physical attack, both are very usable, but its special attack is where it really thrives. Uh, Obviously, this thing can act as a Volt Switcher with like Thunderbolt Volt Switch, Focus Blast, something like that, slap on a Life Orb or anything of that sort, maybe a Hidden Power Ice as well. This thing also has an insane move pool, it gets access to Psychic, Sludge Wave, uh, Dark Pulse, Flash Cannon, things like that. It can just hit things so hard, it gets Grass Knot to hit bulky ground types, which a lot of other electric types are unable to do. This is also an excellent setup sweeper, getting both Nasty Plot and agility. So right off the bat, rounds two and three, I have two mons that hit really hard right off the bat, but can also boost their stats as well with setup and dual dance. So that's really, really cool to have. I have some versatility immediately in my first three picks, and these three picks really synergize well together because they each have different roles that they can fill at any point. Mew can be whatever it wants. Terrakion can be a bunch of different things. Thunderous can be a bunch of different things. So this is really, really nice. Also, uh, playing VGC has kind of made me realize that Thunderous is bulkier than I ever gave it credit for. If I really want to, I can run like a bulkier set if I want to switch into, I guess, uh, something like Talonflame or whatever. I can run a little bit of defense, make sure that I'm not too KO'd by Banded Brave Bird or something like that. Obviously, I'd be hit by Flare Blitz, but can't win them all. So, regardless, Thunderous Incarnate is an absolutely amazing Pokemon. This also gives me more speed, being base 111, being able to outspeed the Lottie Twins, Tauros, things like that, the base 110s, obviously, Gengar as well. So Thunderous Incarnate is just incredibly powerful, very fast, decently bulky, and has an absolutely incredible move pool. So 
That is Thunderous Incarnate. I'm really loving the first three that we have here in Mew, Teraki, on Thunderous. They all cover each other very nicely. They both have support options that Mew doesn't have to take every week. They both have uh, power that, you know, if I want to run these things offensively, I can run Mew supportive. If I want to run Mew offensively, I can run one of these two supportive or something like that. So uh, this is a very good trio in my opinion, and I'm hoping that it gets better from here. So, or I'm hoping that at least the theme of Mon sticking together. <coughs> or at least I'm hoping that the theme of Mon synergizing well together continues throughout this draft. So at this point, uh, Mew was 18, Terrakion I believe was 15, I, I, yeah I believe it's 15, it could be 14 but I'm pretty sure it was 15, and then Thunderous was 17 so I'm starting to spend relatively heavily, which is okay because we still have a decent portion of our budget, but now I'm looking at my team and Mew likes having other hazard removers on the team just because it does not want to be locked into the defog role. And I'm also lacking some hazards here. If you know me, I like to have all forms of hazards on my teams as well as the spin blocker. So I'm looking to get maybe the spin blocker a little bit later, but I'm looking to get my hazards up. Also, Mew and Terrakion, I'm not going to be running Stealth Rocks every week, so I want to have one of those. I want spikes, I want T-spikes, I want removal. And the thing that was probably best for me, which I'm very glad I took then because it was not coming back to me, was Fortress. Now, Fortress, obviously, like, the, um, the goodness, or the, um, the power drop is kind of obvious there, like, you got great things like Mew, Terrakion, Thunderous, and then you're dropping it down to Fortress, so Fortress supports this team very, very nicely. Uh, while Terrak, none of these things are frail, none of these things necessarily want to be switched into a lot of hits, like, I don't want to switch Thunderous in on a lot of hits, I don't want to switch Terrakion on a lot of hits, Mew can take hits, but if I'm running, like, offensive, or if I'm not running recovery, I don't want to, I don't want this thing taking a lot of hits either. Um, Fortress is able to take physical hits very well, with a very good HP and defense stat going up to over 400, I believe, at level 100, yeah, 416. Uh, has a relatively powerful gyro ball. People have run banded before with things like Heavy Slam and Earthquake. It is also a very nice slow volt switcher, so it can act as a bulky pivot, be able to take a... Sorry about that, Siri apparently was recording half of what I was saying. Um, it is a very good slow volt switcher, so I can take a hit volt switch out into one of these offensive threats or an immune to start setting up or just to hit something hard as well. Um, this thing gets the forms of all hazards bar Sticky Web. It gets access to Stealth Rock, Spikes, Toxic Spikes, so I can run like all of the hazards and then something like Volt Switch or Gyro Ball or uh, what I also like to do with it is just run Explosion with a cuff stat barrier that way I can get down to my Sturdy and then guarantee an Explosion off preventing my opponent from spinning or just uh, getting a lot of damage off onto something because base 90 attack is definitely decent and when you're throwing a base 250 power attack onto it it's going to hit something very hard. Uh, Fortress also does have some form of recovery, at least in Pain Split, which is very nice. You saw, if you watched the match between George and I, the first match that we played together, uh, Pain Split was used against me very successfully, and it was very annoying to deal with. I can also um, run berries on this thing, and by berries I mean like Aqua Berry, because it's the only thing it's weak to. Uh, so I can take like unstabbed flamethrowers, or take stab fire punches, or take just fire hits in general, and be guarantee myself a hazard or something like that. Uh, this Pokemon is surprisingly, not necessarily versatile, but it's not necessarily set up fodder because like I said, Gyro Ball kills like Dragon Dance Sweepers or Agility Sweepers. I can Volt Switch out versus certain threats. I can Toxic certain things that may become a problem to me. I have Pain Split to deal with things with a lot of HP or just to get myself back to a decent amount of health. Obviously, like I said earlier, it is a Rabbit Spinner, so I'll be able to spin away my hazards while keeping up the ones that I set on my opponents or else I'll, I'll be able to spin away the hazards on my side of the field, rather. So that is something really nice about Forge, just being able to spin, as well as being able to set up multiple different hazards. Like I said, it gets access to Earthquake, so I can hit things like Magneton and Magnezone four times effectively that may want to trap me. I can also run Shed Shell if I really wanted to. Heavy Slam is really nice for like slower fairies that I would just want to hit very hard. Um, it does get access to Reflect and Light Screen, so if I want to run a Dual Screens variant into Set Up Thunderous, shoddy, playing your week one. Um, then I will be able to do that. Uh, it gets things like Rock Slide in case I need to check something, I guess, like Mega Pinsir or like Talon Flame or something like that, which would be kind of weird, but it's possible. Um, and yeah, not too much else to go about it. It has a very, de definitely a very decent move pool, being able to hit 
certain things relatively hard. But the biggest reason I got this thing is for the spin as well as the hazards being able to support the rest of my team. So that is Fortress, not too much else to go over there. It's a very nice mod for the team, I think, and I'm very happy to have it. So with that being said, let us now move on to our next pick. Now, uh, I had two things in mind that I wanted here. I wanted uh, Dragalgy paired with Mega Stabilize because I have a mod later on that is weak to rocks that I will show off later on, and I wanted Mega Stabilize to also deter hazards. I wouldn't have to worry about hazard removal anymore. It also pairs beautifully with Mew. I believe A-Drive had that combination season 5 of the GBA. Um, and its its biggest problem is fairies because you cannot touch them whatsoever. But Dragalgy does not give a shit about your fairy and just clicks Sludge Wave or Gunk Shot if it wants to and just knocks it out and it's very difficult to switch into. It's a very solid wall breaker and a very solid fairy killer. But unfortunately, George took it relatively close to when I wanted it. So that was definitely unfortunate. However, I did have a backup plan to that. I essentially had two alternate pathways that I could go from after Fortress. If I didn't get Mega Sableye, then I would go after this mod. So or if I didn't get Dragalgy, I would go after this mod and this combination. But before that, um, kind of also a fairy killer that I pick next. Uh, a good Pursuit Trapper. I also have my other Defogger, so I now have two Defoggers in Mew and Skuntank and a Rapid Spinner in Fortress. Uh, this is a mod that is uh, surprisingly good in the format, I think. It has a very solid typing, being able to check pretty much any Psychic type in the game, check a lot of Ghost types. It hits kind of hard on both sides, partic particularly the physical side, even though its attack stat isn't great. Uh, it does have special coverage as well. And this is a mon that fit very nicely with this team as well, not just because I love having Pursuit Trapping, not just because I love having a Defogger, but also typing-wise. It synergized very nicely, being able to check Ghosts, which I currently do not have a resistance to. So, the mon that I decided to go with in order to support the rest of my team is Skuntank. Now, Skuntank round 5 is probably a little bit earlier than you would have expected this thing to go, but Skuntank was very important for the, this, for the mods that I currently have and for the mods that I plan on getting a little bit later on. Uh, Skuntank does have a very good ability in Aftermath, meaning if I am knocked out with a contact move, the, my opponent loses 25% of their HP, which can really come in clutch. This thing has priority in Sucker Punch, Stab Sucker Punch, of course, like I said, it is a Pursuit Trapper. It will be able to hit fairies very hard with Stab Poison Jabs or Sludge Bombs if I want to go special, which is really nice. It is not entirely walled by steals like a lot of Poison types are because it does have access to Flamethrower and Fire Blast, which are really nice, so I can 2 ko things like uh, Ferrothorn or just hit things like Mega Aggron harder than I would be with anything else, which is really nice. Uh, this mod also gets access to some gimmicks, like Acid Spray. I believe Shoddy ran that last season just to hit some- it was either Shoddy or Paul who ran Acid Spray, probably both, who were able to beat Setup Sweepers with this, also hit things like Electros and wear them down and Dark Pulse against it. It's also very nice because once you're lowering their special defense by two, you're able to hit pretty much anything, or you're able to hit that mod very hard, or you're just going to get a free hit off something else, but it's really nice. Like I said, also a defogger, not necessarily the best defogger, but it is a defogger nonetheless, and with the poison typing it will be able to absorb toxic spikes if they are set up on my side of the field. Also has access to haze, so I can eliminate my opponent's setup. I also believe I do get, no I do not get clear smog, that's surprising. Uh, but I do get haze, like I said. I can also have Memento, so I, once again I can go for like a Memento and then start setting up with either of these three mons, which is really nice. It supports my team very well. It gets access to Explosion if I want to run that. Um, <coughs> it gets access to Home Claws. I believe somebody... I think somebody ran Home Claws Skun Tank at one point. I believe it was... No, actually, I'm thinking that wrong. Tup ran um, Home Claws Lie Apart, but I can run Home Claws Skun Tank if I wanted to. Boosting my attack for Sucker Punch is definitely something that I could, I could see doing. Uh, gets access to Play Rough to hit things like, I guess, Pangoro, Scrafty, uh, General Dark Types, of course. Uh, Roar, so I do have Phasing with this. I have, like I said, Special Offense and Sludge Bomb. It's also another Taunt user, so I currently have 5 Pokemon, 4 of which can learn Taunt, which is really nice. Uh, 5 relatively versatile Pokemon, I think, other than, I guess, Fortress, which kind of just does its job <coughs> and supports the rest of the team. 4 very versatile Pokemon in Mew, Terrakion, Thunderous, and Skuntank, so... Um, <coughs> not too much else to go over with Skuntank. It's just, it's just a very solid Pokemon. I know Shoddy used this thing very well last season. It's a solid Pokemon. It's a very good value pick, relatively inexpensive, but does its job very well. 
Like I said, Pursu Pursuit Tribe's Ghost, which I do not have a resistance to, uh, just deals with certain types that my team doesn't like. Which is really cool, because I like Scum Tank, I like what it does for the team, I like that it defogs, and I just like what it does in general, and I'm looking forward to using it, because I have not used this thing in any tier bar and you, which is really cool. So, regardless, with that out of the way, let us now move on to the next member of our team, and this was probably a surprise to some people, because it looked like after my big three here, I was starting to go down in the tiers a little bit, like obviously Fortress is UU, Scum Tank, I believe, is NU, I'm pretty sure it's NU, I should know this, I play NU like all the time, yeah, it's NU. Uh, Scum Tank is NU, <clears throat> and this is a mon that uh, was my replacement for Mega Sableye. Like I said, Scum Tank was my replacement for Dragalge, and this is my replacement for Mega Sableye. And at this point, I don't really have a great switch into Draco Meteor, like nothing wants to take it. Fortress doesn't have recovery, and every dragon on the planet gets a fire move. So I wanted a fairy. A lot of the good fairies at this point were taken. Um, I've also never drafted a dragon in my history in the PPL, Season 1, Season 2. Never drafted a dragon. And this Mew plus this Pokemon is really good. Very kind of scary to use because they're both difficult to use, and I'll get into that in a little bit. But either way, I probably spoiled it already. We are drafting Mega Altaria. Now, uh, the reason I say Mew is hard to use, well, it should be obvious why Mew is hard to use. It gets so many different move options. You gotta be creative, you have to build a team to support it. Mega Altaria is roughly the same way. Uh, you need. Obviously your checks to steel type so you don't have to run a fire move on it every time. You need to be careful when building with Mega Altaria because it's going to have 4 move slot syndrome like Mew. It's going to want to run so many different things. It's going to want to run Return, Earthquake, Fire Blast, Dragon Dance, Facade, Roost, Heal Bell all on the same set multiple different times and you're just obviously not able to fit that. So you have to be careful with what you do with Mega Altaria but it synergizes with this team beautifully, and I think I can definitely make Mew plus Altaria work. This is the combination that Miguel Mega Magua used in Season 5 of the GPA, and it was horrifying for his opponents, because you can't always tell what Altaria is going to be. You typically have no idea what Mew is going to be, so it's just a very frightening combination for your opponent, and it's definitely something I feel like I can utilize. Just going into Mega Altaria's stats, it obviously has... Very nice attack, well pretty much all very nice stats in general, uh, with 75 HP, 110 defense, 105 special defense, this thing is very bulky, uh, being able to not get too KO'd by Specs HP Ice from Raikou if I build this thing properly. Uh, with its attack and special attack at both 110, I can run mixed, I can run like, I can run return and fire blast on the same set, I can run like a cotton guard roost set with mono attacking uh, return like Cotton Guard, Heal Bell, Return, Roost, or something like that. Uh, its special move pool is pretty good as well. It gets access to things like Fire Blast, Ice Beam, Stab Hyper Voice, which is boosted by Pixelate, which is really nice. Obviously, like I said, it has access to Roost. It is a pretty good Cleric as well, both for itself and for the rest of my team. Uh, it's a very good Dragon Dance Sweeper as well. If my opponent doesn't have a great Steel type or a good Poison type, I don't have to run Earthquake. I can just spam Return. And I can build like a bulkier DD set or something like that. I can run special with agility. I can run body slam if I just want to paralyze things, uh, which is definitely possible. If I need extra power, I can run something like double edge. I can drop Dracos if I wanted to, just because they hit things very hard as well. It gets access to, like I said, fire blast and flamethrower. Also gets access to haze, so I guess if I want to run like a Draco Meteor haze set, that'd be cool. Uh, Hone Claws, I'll probably never use in my life, but it's there. Um, no point in moon blast, no point really an outrage. I guess I could run outrage if I wanted to, but there's not usually a point to run that. It also gets pursuit, which I learned after I picked it up, and I was like, alright, that's interesting. I'm not sure what I would force out that I would want to pursuit, but cool. Uh, like I said, gets access to roost, gets access to tailwind. So this thing is also a mon, kind of similar to Mew, gets offensive coverage, can be a possible setup sweeper, also can be a more supportive mon, supportive for the team, supportive for itself. It's just a very nice mod in general. The, the fairy typing, fairy dragon is so good. Being able to switch into fairy, uh, being able to switch into dragons and deal with them immediately is super nice. This is a big reason why I wanted Scum Tank as well because Scum Tank deals with a lot of the fairies that Altaria doesn't want to deal with. Obviously, with the dark typing, it does take it neutrally, but I at least have Fortress to switch into them and Scum Tank to kill them. And Fortress with Heavy Slam will be able to check them as well anyway. So that is Mega Altaria. Like I said, a very very solid Pokemon. I definitely have to 
take a lot of time building with this team so far because like I said there's a lot of versatility here there are a lot of mons that are not super easy to use so I gotta take my time in building but I know that I will be able to utilize this team that I have so far very very well and I'm really looking forward to building with this and I actually have built my uh, week one team for Shadi just because as soon as I got the draft I was like I need to use this so um, enough about that these are the first six that I decided to pick up. Let me know what you think of them in the comment section down below. I will be going on to part two in a moment, so don't go anywhere. But let me know what you think of this so far. I'm really enjoying it. I'm really liking the immediate power I have as well as the setup options, the hazards, things like that, the hazard removal even. So I'm really liking what we got so far. And now let us move on to part two of the team builder and I'll be right back just because I don't want to showcase some of the teams so I'll be right back. Okay we are back, uh, sorry about that, like I said just needed to make sure that my opponent did not see the team that I was bringing for them or at least the six moms that I was bringing for them but regardless let us now move on to the rest of our draft. So at this point I was looking at my team and I thought I needed a bulky water, also like I mentioned earlier on I needed a spin blocker, um, I wanted a scald immunity as well. And I was actually originally just going to get Gorgeist because I like Gorgeist a lot, has some cool mixed options. It's very bulky, you get access to all forms, it's a relatively good value at 8 million. Uh, but unfortunately Shadi ended up taking that, but it's totally fine because this mod that I had last season was still around and that fit all of the criteria that I just mentioned. And I said, alright, you know, I'm just going to pick this up, it's a great mod. We're going to pick up Jellicent. Now, Jellicent is the only returning member from last season. I kind of wanted to keep things new and fun with some different mons that I really wanted to use. Uh, but Jellicent just fit the team too well, and there really wasn't anything else that I was looking at that did what Jellicent did. And like I said, it's a bulky water. It absorbs scalds, so it's a great scald switch and obviously being immune and getting my health back. Um, I don't really have a dark weakness at this point. Like I said, I have Terrakion to switch in and knockoffs and such, um, as well as Altaria, so that's really cool. This thing is extremely good. Uh, I think this is the one of the most underrated water types in the entire format. Uh, the things that it does differently from other water types are A, it's move pool, because most water types like Vaporeon, Melodic, and things like that, you run like Scald, maybe Ice Beam, uh, maybe a Phasing Move, Wish, Protect, Recover, things like that. But <coughs> Jellison gets a surprisingly good move pool, also has that secondary typing that can help it out in certain situations. So, for example, obviously you got your Scald, you got your Recover. Standard bulky water things, I suppose. Next up, you have things like will o -Wisp, so you can burn your opponent's things. Obviously, you have Toxic as well, but will o -Wisp is really cool. Also, to help out with will o -Wisp, you also get access to Hex. Also, of course, Shadow Ball if you just want standard Ghost coverage. So you have that as an option. As you can see, you get access to Dazzling Gleam, so you can hit Dark types that maybe want to switch into you. Energy Ball to hit other bulky water types. Giga Drain as well as secondary Grass coverage, in case you want to get some of that HP back. Um, Ice Beam as well, Magic Coat so I can deter other people from taunting me or deter rocks or something like that, Nightshade if I really want to, Psychic to hit uh, possible fighting types, so I would probably rather just scald them, Psychic is still just very nice to have there, um, Sludge Mom and Sludge Wave if I wanted to run them to hit certain fairy types. Taunt is the big one, Taunt is what really separates Jellison from other bulky water types, because with Taunt you are able to beat other bulky water types, I remember in the GBA uh, Tom brought a speedier Jellison versus George's Melodic, and he was able to completely shut it down, hit it with a taunt, status it, and then just beat it 1v1, because if their bulky water type is only running Scald, you literally cannot touch Jellison. You are actually healing them with the only attack, and you are first forced to switch out at some point. Uh, also, you can run something like a Trick Set. I have run Scarfed with Water Spout in the past versus Ellie, and it was able to do things beautifully. It was able to knock out an Electabuzz and get a surprise kill on that thing, and Water Spout being base 150 at full health does th hit things very very hard and I was very glad to be able to get that kill. It was very satisfying, it was a lot of fun uh, because with base 60 speed it's actually not the worst scarf in the world, it speed ties with Magnazone so it's outsped by anything uh, fast, anything that is 115 or faster but regardless still very nice to have. It is very bulky the base 100 HP is that 105 special defense. It can take special hits easily, so I can run a lot of that into physical defense, in which it will be able to switch into a plethora of different things. A lot of offensive fire types can switch into things like Darmanitan, Infernape to an extent, uh, can switch into things like Entei relatively well, so it's a very reliable mod for that. Um, it's not incredibly weak, base 85 special attack is decent, especially since I mainly 
I have the pretty much the most mammable move in the game being Scald. I can possibly burn things with this thing. It's not super passive. Like I said, I have Taunt to shut down any kind of setup or any kind of uh, status thing onto me, which is really nice. So Jellicent is just an absolutely incredible Pokemon. And another big thing that I love this thing for is obviously with its ghost typing, I can spin block. So if I'm setting a path to the Fortress or Mew or Terrakion or something like that, and my opponent's going to go for a spin, I can go out into Jellicent and stop them from spinning. I did that successfully versus Paul. I did that successfully versus some other people as well. So it's just a very nice mod in order to spin block, in order to take a lot of different hits, and in order to fire back stalls, possibly burn things, taunt things, will those things, status things, etc. So I am very glad to have this Pokemon. It is very solid for the team. So that is Jellison. Sorry if there was a weird cut there. Somebody just had to come in for a moment, but regardless, this is Jellicent. I should probably have the sprites of the other Pokemon down over in the right hand side just so that you don't have to keep going back into the video see what else I have or if you're having trouble remembering what I have so all the sprites should be there hopefully uh, but you know as long as I remember to edit it which I tend to not do <laughs> um, but regardless that is jealous and very solid mod for the team very happy it's returning uh, it is a great mod and I'm glad to have it so with that being said let us now move on to the next member of our team, and looking at my team, I have one Electric Resist in Mega Altaria, which is not a resist until Mega Evolves, and I have no immunities, which is not good. I think if there's any type you absolutely need in a draft format, it is a ground type to stop Volt Switch. Because, not just because if your team is weak to Electric, but also if your team is just weak to uh, Volt Switch, your opponent's gonna get a free switch every single time, there's nothing you can do about it. So I like having a reliable ground type to stop electric types and even though it's kind of late in the draft there were a couple mons that I was looking at there was Rhyperior which ended up get getting taken right before I wanted it there was still Rhydon there were a couple different ground types there was, I was even considering Stunfisk for a little while because I needed like I said I needed that ground typing but actually this mon came to mind once Rhyperior was taken or actually a little bit before Rhyperior was taken I was debating between this mon and Rhyperior and Rhyperior got taken, so that made my choice a little bit easier. I didn't have a nice type at this point either. Mammoth Swine had not been taken, but I couldn't afford Mammoth Swine, so I went with this uh, younger sibling, and I went with Pyloswine. Now, Pyloswine is the mod I have on my GBA team. It is the mod I have actually come to really like. Uh, with Thick Fat, it's essentially you resist ice and you take fire hits neutrally. It has nearly the same bulk as Mammoth Swine without the Aviolite. It has 10 less H base HP points. And with an Aviolite, this thing can take hits incredibly. If I run a specially defensive set, I'm not too okayed by Aura Sphere from Raikou. So it has incredible stats there. It takes physical hits relatively well if I build it right. I can take close combats from things and hit them with an Earthquake and may possibly knock them out after the defense drops. It can take unstabbed Grass Knots relatively well if I build this thing Spadef. Um, and also, of course, has the same utility as Mammoth Swine. Um, also relatively the same moves. I have things like Earthquake to hit things relatively hard. With a base 100 attack stat, I can bring this thing to hit very hard. Uh, let me just get rid of that. It goes up to 328 at level 100, as you can see. Hits things relatively hard. I have Icicle Crash, Icicle Spear, of course, as well. Ice Shard for that nice priority, and I didn't have, like I said, I didn't have a lot of ice coverage on my team yet, so this is really nice, especially to have the ice stab. Um, I can run this thing as a stealth rocker, it's a very reliable stealth rocker. If I want to, I can run Oblivious so that I can't be taunted and I'm just going to be able to get off my free stealth rock, which is really cool. It gets access to knock off, it does not get access to knock off, I am an idiot. Um, but yeah, it's it's not super versatile this mod, unless you're running the curse set like a lord like Eric, uh, which it does get. You can run like a bulky curse like rest talk set with like earthquake or something like that, or a nice move if you can afford to, which is really cool. Um, Obviously, it gets like Body Slam if I want to try and parry things, not that I would. It does get access to Freeze Dry, but with a pitiful special attack stat, I don't see myself using that too often. Maybe when the time comes, but uh, probably not that often. Um, let me see, I, can, I guess I can run dual screens on it if I wanted to. Obviously, it gets access to Rock Slide as well, Stone Edge, Super Power, so it has decent move coverage as well. It's not very passive at all. I can run Roar on this thing. If you did watch my last match versus George, I ran Roar to beat a substitute Manaphy, which is really nice. I couldn't afford it setting up. I just clicked Roars, it went for sub, and that was really good. Uh, there's not too much else to say about this thing. It's a very reliable check to electric types. I'm not going to need it every week, but when my opponent has an electric type that scares me, I have this thing there so that I can possibly stop it and deal with it in its tracks. So that is Pilot's line. Not going to spend any more time on it. 
I'm very comfortable using it. I have fighting type switch ins, I have graph switch ins, so like I'm not worried about this thing's weaknesses. So yeah, there's that. So now with Pilot's Line being out of the way, let us now move on to the mon that I was looking forward to getting this entire draft, but I waited on it because I didn't think anyone would want to take it. Uh, this is a mon that I have shown my affection for in the past. It's been a little while since I used it last, but this is one of my favorite mons in general. It's some, a mon I think that has tremendous potential in the format. This is a mon that um, also acts as my fast cleaner. If you remember from last season, I had Megalopunny do that. Obviously, I don't think this mon is as good as Megalopunny. But I like having a fast mon at that late game, I can just send in and click a button and then finish off the rest of weakened Pokemon, so I wanted something similar to that. This thing has great abilities, it has pretty good stat distribution, it has a very powerful special attack stat, it has some cool gimmicks as well, and this is a mon I really look forward to using in an official draft format. I did have it for the March Madness tournament, my team for that wasn't that great, didn't support it that well, but I feel like with this team I can support it very well and that mon is Yon Mega. Now, why did I draft Yon Mega? Why do I think it's so good? Well, look at its stats first of all. Uh, 86 HP, 86 defense. It can take uh, ice shards actually relatively well, surprisingly. It's not too a KO'd, well it is too a KO'd by a decent number of things, so it's not necessarily bulky, but it can take physical priority relatively well. I'm not knocked out from full, or I'm not even knocked out after a couple life orb hits, which is really nice. Its special attack stat at 116 is really solid, and if I'm running modest with speed boost, which I probably will be able to most of the time, it goes all the way up to 364, and that is just very powerful. With a life orb, this thing hits incredibly hard. Its move pool is very good as well. Bug, flying, hits most things. Obviously, it's walled by like steel types and things like that, but I do have a couple ways around that. I do deal with steel types relatively well with my draft anyway, so I don't have to worry about them too much. It also gets access to ancient power to hit certain flying types. I can 2 KO like um, electric flying types after stealth rock, which is really nice with the ancient power. Of course, I also have the chance to get the boost. Uh, Giga Drain for grass coverage. I can hit those water ground types super effectively, or just bulky waters in general. Whatever hidden power I decide to run can be really useful. I've run hidden power electric uh, in UU just for Gyarados, things like that. I used to run hidden power ice as well for Salamence when that was in UU. I uh, get access to Psychic to hit certain poison types that I can't super hard. It is a Pursuit Trapper, not that I plan on using it as a Pursuit Trapper. Its attack stat isn't terrible at 76, but I just really want to take advantage of that special attack stat, which is extremely high. Um, <coughs> I apologize. Uh, hypnosis, I guess, if I decide to run that with like... You don't get... You don't get Compound Eyes, so never mind, we're not running that ever. Um, Yes, you can run Natural natural Gift, Ominous Wind, I think Togue did that in his Monotype battle or something, which was stupid, and it worked. Um, but you do have that as an option. But, like I said anyway, the combination of this move pool plus whatever hidden power I decide to go with, with a Life Orb and Speed Boost, just makes this a great uh, late game cleaner. And something I really like about this mod as well, that is something I don't think a lot of people think about, is the fact that it gets a very powerful bug buzz because the way you can capitalize on me going for like a protect which I'd be running a lot of the time with speed boost is uh, go for a substitute so you can protect the protect go for a sub and then I'm fucked I can't hit you but uh, and that was the problem I kind of ran into in the TBU when I had scallopede not didn't wasn't a problem often but it did happen once against Skyrender where I lost 50 50 didn't matter because I didn't have speed boost because I'm an idiot but regardless with Bug Buzz, I can hit my opponent but from behind a sub, and with a stab 90 base move with this much special attack, that Bug Buzz is going to really hurt behind a sub, and there's not a lot that wants to take that hit, especially after taking away your HP. So like, you go for a substitute, you lose some of your HP, you probably die to a life or Bug Buzz on the next turn anyway, unless you resist it, or you have a very powerful, or unless you're just extremely naturally bulky. And if you're extremely naturally bulky, there's a good chance you won't be able to knock me out anyway, unless you have like HP Rock or a special super effective move, because Spadef is kind of terrible. But regardless, Yan Mega has the ability to hit behind a substitute extremely hard. And even if you predict that and go for the sub on a protect, that doesn't save you unless you are something that can take a bug buzz at 75% because Yan Mega is just extremely powerful, has probably the most powerful Bug Buzz in the game, bar like Volcarona or something like that, so... That is Yan Mega. I am really looking forward to using this thing. It also has a couple other gimmicks that I haven't really gone over too much in this uh, video, just because I kind of want to keep them a secret, but I guess... 
something that I didn't mention. Uh, Frisk is a pretty good ability, or Frisk is a very good ability, but Anyan Mega, I don't see it being too useful just because I'm going to be wanting to run one of these two moves. And uh, Tinted Lens is also a really good ability, which essentially, if you don't know what this does, is this Pokemon's attack that are not very effective on a target deal double damage. So essentially, it turns resisted hits into neutral hits. It turns four times resistances into just two times resistances, which is really, really nice because Bug and Flying do have a decent number of resistances, but when you get rid of those resistances, you're just taking very powerful neutral hits. So suppose I'm running like a, um, a timid max special attack Tinted Lens set with like a Choice Specs or something like that. This thing can 2 a KO so many different things. Like, it can 2 a KO fairies, it can 2 a KO poison types with bug buzz. I can run, like, U-turn on it if I wanted to, to gain myself initiative into things I still can't hit very hard. This is the really good ability, because, like I said, things that you would switch into the speed boost variant, you can't switch into to the tinted lens variant, and that is really cool to me, and I'm very glad that Yanmega has that secondary option, because there are going to be times where uh, the speed boost variant, despite its move pool, will not be able to break through teams, whereas Tinted Lens would. So this is a very good ability for Yan Mega to have. This is a very good uh, support to my team because, like I said, with speed boost, I can clean up late game. I do have some priority as well, but it's nice just having a mod that can boost its speed and then outspeed the rest of my opponent's team, click a button, and then knock out the rest of my opponent's team. So that is Yan Mega. Uh, that is our last. That is. Uh, probably the last key piece to this team, like everything up until now, has been a very important key piece to the team. And then I have two more picks coming. I got all 11 mons, uh, two picks remaining. At this point, I have 3 million, so I don't have a lot. But at this point, I'm just looking at something that I don't have. I feel like my team so far is looking really good, but I'm like, what do I not have? And the answer to that is a fire type. And I was looking through, I was like, there's what fire type are 3 million, what are 2 million, what is something I can afford that isn't complete garbage. And I saw this Pokemon, and this is actually a Pokemon I really, I think is really cool. It's not necessarily good, uh, both in the format and in standard play, but, I mean, I didn't think Flareon was going to be good at all, and that thing ended up being like 4-0 in two games. So, it's a mod that is probably going to be situationally decent, and that's totally fine. When I have this group of 9 mods that I have already, why not throw something on there that I can surprise people once or twice the season, or possibly more if it has a good matchup and I see that. So, without further ado, let us now bring onto the team Heatmore. So this, like I said, is a fire type that I did not have currently on the draft. It also is a fire immunity because it does have the access to flash fire, so suppose I bring this in Fortress, people are going to have to be careful about clicking like Hidden Power Fire or Flamethrower or Flare Blitz onto my Fortress because you'll be powering up my Heatmore. Uh, this thing has surprisingly good offensive stats, 97 attack is not bad, don't know why you have 0 IVs, but 97 is not bad, goes up to uh, 293, I can run things like knock off, it gets priority in Sucker Punch, and just get Flare Blitz, it's not that as unfortunate, uh, it does get Body Slam I guess if you want to run something like that, I'll just go through its physical move, full power up punch, sure, why not, uh, low kick, could actually be useful in certain situations. Shadow Claw, it's also a Pursuit Trapper. I did not know that everything on my team got Pursuit, Jesus. Uh, Superpower is definitely something I can see being useful. Thunder Punch as well to hit certain bulky water types, which is really nice. And that's not even getting into its special move pool. Like I said, obviously Fire Type gets something like Fire Blast, Flamethrower, things like that. It also gets access to Giga Drain, which is also really cool for um, bulky water types can hit Rotom for a 2 a KO if I wanted to, and I'm running enough speed for it. Gets things like Focus Blast to also hit other steel types that do not want to, or that can deal with Fire Blast or something like that. Uh, it gets access to, uh, like I said, Sucker Punch for priority. Its special move pool, I guess, isn't as deep as I thought it was, but regardless, Fire Grass Fighting is just still really good in general, plus whatever hidden power I decide to give it, like HP Ice or HP whatever the hell is good in certain situations, so sure, I'm probably not going to bring this thing a lot. Sure, may not have the best stats, may not be very bulky, may not hit the hardest in the world, but it does hit relatively hard with a base 105 special attack stat. It's not that fast, not that bulky like I said, but there will be situations where I see this thing and I'll be like, you know what, this does okay and I'll decide to bring it. Also, to be honest, it has probably the best shiny on the planet. Look at that. Look at this. That's awesome. Anyway. Um, enough about that, let us now move on to our last Mon, and we have 1 million point left. We have 1 million point left, yeah. We have 1 million left. 
Uh, so anything good is not going to happen because there's nothing really that good at 1 million. Uh, bar like Machoke, which Kelly was able to get, and I was like, I can't believe we missed this. Uh, but this is also a mon that I'm very surprised that we actually ended up missing because it is surprisingly good. It's one of the best mons in Little Cup. Um, um, uh, it's just, it. we got Abra. <laughs> we got Abra. So, um, it's dumb. Uh, with Magic Guard and a Focus Sash, Abra acts as a free Thunder Wave or a free, a free attack. Free uh, Trick Room, I guess. Something along those lines. Uh, so there's definitely... Abra's not a complete waste, because like I said, I have 1 million left. I'm not getting anything good. Uh, if I wanted to, also with the new draft system of the PPL or with the new transfer system, I, if I wanted to, I can drop Heatmore and Abra and get something for 3 million. You don't get punished for picking things like this anymore like you used to, uh, which is really cool because actually Abra's surprisingly strong and fast. Base 90 is not bad whatsoever. Like That goes up to 306. You're at speeding things like Mammoth Swine, you're at the speeding base 80s, you're at speeding things like Toxicroak, things like that. Obviously you die if you get hit by a light breeze, uh, but regardless, Abra's not really here to take hits. It's probably not going to be on any team ever, but if I want to bring some sort of weird gimmick that Abra can do for me, then I might as well just throw it onto my team, because 105 special attack is really surprisingly good. Like, look at this thing. You don't think this is going to be capable of this, because 105 is not bad, and it still gets the move pool of Kadabra and Alakazam. You get Psychic, you get Dazzling Gleam, you get Energy Ball. Uh, you don't get Focus Last, unfortunately. You get Focus Punch if I want to be a god with uh, base 20 attack. Perfect. Um, you get uh, little gimmicks like Encore. You get Taunt. You get things like that. Uh, you do get Combine if I somehow find that to be a good situation. You get Grass Knot. So if you look only at its... Like, ignore, ignore everything other than the attack and speed. Or the special attack and speed. It looks pretty good. You know, 105.90. Ign ignore ignore this. Ignore these three things here. This, this, and this. Ignore that. Ignore this. It's Abra. Anyway, I'm gonna finish up with Abra now. Uh, it's mainly a meme pick. Like, I picked it because I had no reason not to. If I don't like it and I want something else, I can just drop it, get my money back, and then pick up something else later on. Uh, and if I see at some point that it has a decent matchup versus the team, or I see that it has something that can benefit my team, then sure, I can bring it. Like I said, it's not a terrible, it's not an inherently terrible mod. It has some sort of use in this format and uh, with my team, so maybe I'll see the opportunity to use it. If not, then it can sit on the bench and look adorable and like psychokinesis cups over to people, but <laughs> it's so stupid. Um, that's enough about Abra. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, the team should be on the right below. We have all of those mons, and I'm, and I'm really looking forward to use all of them. Really interested in building with this team. Our week one opponent is none other than Shadi, coach of the Baron Munich, uh, which is definitely going to be a very intense match. He has come very close to PPL titles in the past. He is really looking to get one this season and I'm really looking forward to playing him. He's a very good battler as well, very good friend as well. Uh, so I hope you're looking forward to that. Uh, not too much else to say. If you're looking forward to team analysis, they will be back up on Sundays because we are uploading on Mondays now. Uh, so you'll be able to get the uh, inside thought processes of me as I'm going through the team and as I'm building with the team. Uh, you'll be able to get the matches up or I'll be able to get the matches up for you guys to watch on Monday like I said with the same layout that I've been using for the GBA it is a very nice layout made by Beth aka Sandwiches a uh, wonderful person very good friend of mine as well but uh, that is enough this video has gone on long enough thank you guys very much for watching and I hope you're excited for the season because I certainly am so have a good day everyone